Yvonne Farage. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It will come as no surprise that as Chair of the All-Party Group on Legal Aid, it is the proposals to reform legal aid about which I wish to speak, really. Although I would like to first take issue with the attempt by the Government to legitimise the cuts in legal aid by insisting that England and Wales have by far the most expensive legal aid system in the world. The one piece of research that has been done by this, which is actually on the Ministry of Justice website, states that um, they are not comparing like with like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's an interesting piece of research. I do commend it to everyone. However, turning to legal aid, the smallest proportion of the budget, and it's the hardest hit. Over 5,000 individuals and groups responded to the consultation, and 90% said do not take social welfare law out of scope. And can I stress, Mr Deputy Speaker, these were not fat cat lawyers worried about their income, but individuals and organisations who will see the effect that this will have on their most needy and vulnerable clients and those that are least able to defend themselves. I will give way. No, for giving way on the basis of what you've just been saying, would the Honourable Member agree with me that the CAB, which has a tremendous reputation around the country for serving uh, those very disadvantaged people who I think will lose out with these cuts of legal aid, that it would be a tragedy for the CAB and it would be a tragedy for a lot of those disadvantaged individuals? Yeah, I, I, I certainly accept what the Honourable Member says, and I will come to Citizens Advice Bureaus and the effect on other advice agencies later. The Government's impact assessment acknowledges that the losers will be predominantly women, people from ethnic minority backgrounds, and the ill and disabled, yet another example of the most vulnerable bearing the brunt of the cuts. It's worth reminding the House of why the scope of legal aid was extended to include social welfare law and advice agencies and not-for-profit advisers were actually able to enter this field. The Labour Government recognised that early intervention and, and advice and the ability to deal with a cluster of problems was cost-effective and that dealing with problems at an early stage stopped people reaching crisis point and turning to other, more expensive government-funded services. It recognised that advice agencies such as CAB had expertise in this area and could provide an effective and a trusted delivery mechanism. As is often said though, not all bureaus have got contracts, but over 200 do have contracts and yeah. over 1,500 outlets provide the advice from these 200 bureaus. Throughout the country they provide specialist services funded by the Legal Services Commission. Without this funding the viability of all these outlets and their main bureau is under threat coupled as it is, in many cases, with cuts to local authority funding, loss of PCT funding, and no certainty about the Financial Inclusion Fund. Perhaps I can give an example from my own borough. In 2010, there were 3,080 cases procured by the Legal Services Commission. If these plans go through, there will be a 76% cut in these cases. 2,342 people will be denied access to justice. The total loss of funding in Wigan will be £428,000. And those are figures. But behind those figures, we have people. Mm. People like the woman who attended my local CAB being prosecuted for fraud by the DWP and told she owed £26,000. After three mm. appeals, it was found she owed less than £300 due to departmental errors. People like the couple who had, in, who had borrowed to adapt their property for their disabled child and after her unexpected death could no longer maintain all the repayments due to the drop in income and had the bailiffs at their door. People like the woman in the secure mental health unit who needed help and healing against the refusal of DLA and the suspension for job seekers allowance for not attending an interview. I can go on about this. But each example demonstrates that it's the vulnerable who are losing, yes, here, here. and they're losing those who are there to speak out for them. In fact, the timing when the Welfare Reform Act is coming in in 2013 is absolutely appalling. It's removing access to people's fundamental rights, a fundamental right to have a decent income and to live without fear of debt. 
that's what it's removing from people here. And it's accepted. People are also losing the ability to hold government departments to account. And that's what the loss of legal aid is doing in welfare law. The Department of Work and Pensions already loses over 60% of their cases. These cases will no longer be challenged by advice agencies. Demand for debt advice has also risen, as rising prices, static wages and job losses mean that people can't afford any longer to keep maintain payments. I don't believe that tackling this issue when it reaches crisis point and people are at imminent danger of losing their home is actually a sensible, fair or economic way of dealing with it. Dealing with debt at an early stage actually ensures that priority debts are not ignored. It ensures that the clamorous non-priority creditors who know that actually they are non-priority and that's the only way they'll get paid mm. will actually keep going on at the, at the debtors. And most important of all, it takes away the extreme levels of stress and depression that there's any threat of losing a home or possession, imminent or not, causes to individuals. That's right. In fact, the 2009 Legal Services Research Centre, they researched debt advice and they found that unresolved debt matters cost the public purse over £1,000 on average. Legal aid for each debt case costs £196. I think the figures speak for themselves on that. I could go further, but I would like to ask the Minister, in the short time I've got left, to answer some questions. What are they doing to address the impact of the government proposals on the advice sector? What assessments has he made of the availability of advice in 2013? What assessment has been made on the effect of the tribunal service and increasing numbers representing themselves in person? And finally, has any assessment been made of the cost of the public purse of not providing access to social welfare law under the legal aid scheme?